Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. What is happening? Welcome to Working Hours. My name is Simon Treen and I want to ask 1,000 lawyers, that's people in Leeds or from Leeds, over this decade, the second question that everybody asks everybody. What do you do? So, if you're in Leeds or from Leeds, then be my guest, Leeds. Email workinghourspod at western-studios.com with a short bio and some ideas about your availability. You can appear as yourself or anonymously on the show and you will have approval over what gets published from our chat. Welcome to episode 14, the fourth episode of 2021. My guest today is Jason Allen, and this interview was again recorded over Skype on the 16th of December 2020. Jason works as a digital video editor for Channel 4 in Leeds, editing and helping to produce video content across all of Channel 4's social platforms. Jason also has his own YouTube channel where he reviews TV shows. Uh, There is a link for that in the show notes. We discuss his history of interest in animation and how that led on to starting his YouTube channel and ultimately to working for a public service broadcaster. Before we start this episode, here's my quick shout out for guests. Guests! I need you. Leads, I really need to get representation from every sector, every role and every level of pay, every identity in Leeds or from Leeds. I want every sort of loiner, so even if you're a loiner who can't or doesn't work, I still want to hear about how you think of work. Leeds, what do you do? Remember, I need to be interviewing about 100 people a year and I can't do that without your help. Be reassured, your job isn't boring to me and neither are you. So if you fancy the opportunity to talk to someone for an hour or so who will actually listen to you as you answer questions that you know all the answers to, then come and be on the show. How often do any of us actually get listened to these days? Well, here's your chance now, Leeds. Get in touch and tell me about it. It's easy and it's fun. Let's get into this then. What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, yeah. God, I, I, I think when I was a kid, I wanted to be like a world explorer, which isn't a job, but it's something <laughs> I wanted to be. Um, <laughs> well, you could but, have been a travel writer or something. I suppose that's definitely, I guess you, you could technically call yourself that. And if you make money from like bl- travel blogging or that kind of thing, then you kind of actually are that. Um, but yeah, that was like when I was like, five or something probably but yeah i i i, I, don't, I don't know it's, it's one of those weird questions that you, you i might not even remember what i you wanted to be when i would grow up but i think when i got to like i guess being a teenager i did watch a lot of stuff online and did get to the point where i wanted to make stuff online um like there was this like i used to go on like newgrounds.com which is where a lot of independent animators made a lot of silly nonsense um and i tried animating at that time and i was terrible and i think i had this I had this um stick figure animation i made in windows movie maker and it was like five seconds per frame and it yeah. was awful and it was to the kaiser chiefs which is hilarious and i can't find it anymore uh, it's, it's lost to the void but um yeah i don't know i think this is such a weird question. This is a such a hard question sometimes because like I, I I don't think I ever specifically want to be anything mm-hmm. specific growing up. I wasn't like I want to be an astronaut, but I think yeah yeah there's yeah. there's a lot of things you could be. Well yeah well there's the, the whole variety of everything really isn't there? Um, yeah. It's just whether you know about it and what your aptitude is and how close you are to doing that work. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So what did what do you do now? I, I am a video editor for Channel Four in Leeds. New head offices. In the new head office, we're not we're not in the big one yet. We're not in the big one outside the train station, the uh, majestic. But we will be sometime next year. Um, we're we're somewhere else in the city centre in in some sort of office building. But like it was, I think it was supposed to be completely open this year. But then obviously this year happened. So. Um, it's been pushed back a little bit. Yeah, sure. everything, everything's working at a much slower pace. Mm. Yeah. So how did you how did you get into that? Initially, 
Well, when I went, I went to uni in Huddersfield, and I initially wanted to be a social worker, which is okay. nothing to do with what I do now. Um, but that's the course I did because I, my uncle was a social worker, and I, I, I admired him a lot. And I wanted to be, I wanted to do good like he did. So I, I went to that and then found it wasn't really for me. After yeah. like, you know, four or five years of trying, um, yeah. I think it's, you have to be quite a certain, be a certain kind of strong person to do that, that kind of work. And I think it was, it, it brought me, it was quite an anxious, it brought me a lot of anxiety and a lot of, yeah. um, you know, I had a lot of trouble trying to do that job. Yeah, but um, on the side, I was make I was on YouTube. I was I had my own YouTube channel, and I was making that as like a hobby. So okay. I've been video editing for quite a long time, just as my own passion, like completely yeah. self-taught. And from there on, I I kind of when I got when I left uni, and I was like, oh, I don't know what to do now because this isn't working out for me. I haven't got through with this. What's what's my alternative? I started turning to my hobby and thought maybe I could try and get into something like TV or making stuff online. So then I started trying to get better at video editing and like taking on like freelance work. And I eventually got a job in London uh, working for some big listicle type YouTube channels. Yeah. And from there on it started kind of kind of started to take off a little bit yeah. like trying to get into this career mm-hmm. and then yeah since then i've worked on loads of other different like types of freelance projects and projects with big companies and that kind of thing and and now i'm at channel four in leeds and that is still mental to me mm-hmm. um it's 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 a dream come true really like yeah like i think uh, you talk, tell me like three or four years ago that's where I'm going to end up I, I would not believe you you know yeah, yeah. It's, it's mental for sure so sort of ending up back on your doorstep basically yeah exactly yeah. yeah so are you from Leeds originally or are you from Huddersfield I'm I'm actually from Oldham so I'm, I'm a little right. bit further away um yeah. so I've slowly drifted towards West Yorkshire even more yeah. uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm 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 from Oldham. Um, but so what, what, was it just the course that took you to Huddersfield then? Yeah, like, that particular course, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, and it's is near enough by. I had some friends in Yorkshire, and I um, yeah, that was that was pretty much where my affinity for Yorkshire began. Um, I did quite a lot of like when I was at social doing social work. I did a few placements in Leeds and stuff, so I know. I've known the city for a while, but now I'm at, now I'm finally living here, and it's a weird year to move here, to be honest. Yeah. So um, you, I guess, did you start this job this year as well? Then, uh, yeah, I started started in May, which is like right in the middle of lockdown. Yeah. Um, so, so and we ended up moving to Leeds at the start of April, which is right at the start of lockdown. Yeah, yeah. which was also mental this has yeah. been a weird year <laughs> yeah but like it's it's i'm not gonna say oh i had a really hard time moving up or anything like that i think there's a lot of people who've had way you know worse years than i'm i've been having um i i wouldn't want to come across like i'm you know oh i've had such a hard year moving to my dream job god no i think yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's it feels feels a little yeah it's 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 been fine it's been weird for sure but i uh, i think yeah it, it despite everything i think it's been quite uh, it's, it's turned out quite well but uh it has definitely been different i i i didn't meet anyone on my team till like september october we have been working from home the entire time in a new job like completely remotely which I think is is a lot different if you haven't met anyone beforehand yeah. than if you you were working somewhere previously and then then we're, we're forced into this situation. I think it's I think it's just a strange strange way to work. But I think the nature of my job has been fine. So I think it's been been definitely doable. 
with with you know little weird quirks to it. Yeah, yeah. And are you like, how is the working from home for you? Are you kind of sort of used to it anyway? Like with doing your own YouTube videos and stuff, you and and being an editor, you're kind of used to working quite often on your own and kind mm. of getting on with the work. So has it been much of a change for you? In in a lot of ways, it feels it, it for for like a, at the start, it felt a little bit like I was like a freelance editor for someone else rather than actually being being employed yeah. <laughs> um, by someone full time because it because it like freelance video editing is pretty much is pretty much a work from home setup really yeah yeah it's, it's, it's you, you know you home your office in that situation and this has felt in so many ways the same but then also this is but having a, like a permanent job yeah I, I i kind of i think from that sense i was a little bit more prepared for work from home than i guess a lot of other people because it's yeah. kind of something i've already done and it's made it a bit more of a natural fit uh, i i like it i i i don't mind i think i would want to continue working from home like half and half yeah, the, yeah. like once everything gets back to normal i think i think it's kind of gonna change things for a lot of people for the better yeah um because it's it's it, people can work from home if you you know a lot of jobs if you if you have a laptop you can work from home yeah um it, it don't necessarily mean you're gonna reduce productivity being in your pajamas all day you'll yeah. still get the work done maybe you know yeah. or quite possibly a lot more done because you know you're not sat on the bus for an hour so that time you could maybe you know, the time that people would spend on their commute on their laptop drinking a coffee, they mm. can have that time just sat at home in their pajamas, you know. They exactly. They have to brush it. And, uh, and it's yeah, also and like, face. yeah, and it's also better for, yeah, it's better. You might, you might not even be spending that extra time working, but you're spending that time, you know, getting more sleep and yeah. getting more time for yourself and more time with your family. I think that's, yeah. that's I, think, I think this is going to change things for people because people will realize what it's like you know now and going back to work is going to cause i think it's it's going to be it's going to cause a lot of grief if any anywhere tries to uh force people back into the office lifestyle full time mm. you know i think with channel four they're gonna that they've they've already told us that once this is all over they're gonna implement like a hybrid kind of system where it's like yeah. half work from home and half um in the office yeah and you can adjust that based on like you know little little tweaks here or there like preference wise but it's going to be quite it's going to be quite interesting to see how it works and and how many other places like follow suit because it's mm -hmm. it's kind of them embracing that whole um work thing the, the new way of working which is even crazier considering they've just built a new building a new yeah. office for, for us to work in and we might not even be in it half the time yeah yeah that's pretty mad <laughs> it's not yeah, even yeah. finished being built yet <laughs> and we're already like we don't need offices yeah. anymore yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah i mean that that's the other side i mean like it's attractive to companies once they realize it's like well people are still doing the work they're still turning up they're still being productive mm. and we don't have to pay for this expensive office somewhere that mm. costs us x amount of money and we can just have People take on a lot of these expenses themselves. You know, we don't have to provide tea and coffee in the office, and we don't have to pay for the cleaners for the office, and we don't have to pay for reception and security for the office. And 100%. so, um, yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to a, a lot of places of like, well, we can be more dispersed, and especially as people are kind of working, you know, it, it gives you a flexibility to a degree as a worker in that you can potentially work anywhere in the world like you could get assignments from the US or Oz or you know anywhere in the English speaking world and yeah do it from your home office essentially you just need yeah. the files don't you to edit so exactly I think it's going to be interesting to see how, how this works from like an employer's you know point of view do they want people local or would they be happy to have someone on the other side of the world I think that's going to be it's going to be in some ways maybe a big concern um it's been again interesting from my perspective in channel four because even despite the whole you know because of our team as well because basically with this this the uh, 
part of Channel 4 I work for is like the digital side. So all like the Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, all anything that's like primarily online based. That's what the team in all the big part of the team in Leeds is working on. Yeah. Um, so it's a brand new team as well. It's a brand new facet to Channel 4. And so when when, they, when they've done all the hires up here, they they even though this year has been happening and people can work from anywhere, they, they have been like requiring people to have some affinity to the North or some affinity to Leeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it's probably part of their remit as well. But um, like they want us to eventually move here, even if even if he can work from anywhere. Yeah. You know, which I think is great. I think that's that's really nice. So it's not just like all based in bloody London. Bloody you know? London. <laughs> Bloody London. I can say how, it, how, I live there. <laughs> uh, exactly. How long were you down there for? Uh, about about two years. Two um, years. Two, two years. And it was, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. But it was like, I, I just, I think I just missed home. My, all my friends are up here. Yeah, um, I think for me, the first year in London was the hardest year. Yeah. And then after that, it got much, much better. Um, whereabouts were you? I was, I was Dalston, sort of Tottenham way. I was I moved around a lot um, in two years. Christ, I was in um... couch surfing. <laughs> um, I, I kind of couch like the first place I moved in was for like a month or two was um, it was a doctors or a bunch of junior doctors um, who were living in Kennington, and then I moved to like northwesty like Kensal Green. I don't know if you know where that is, and then yeah. I moved to Shepherd's Bush, and then I moved to Greenwich. Just on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm in Leeds. <laughs> which is slightly further out than London. <laughs> well, from London thinking everywhere is just a suburb of London anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in terms of other roles, so you've do, you did the, the social working, so you've done that for a bit, so that's given you experience in another sort of field. Has, have all your other roles just been video editing then since since the social working? Um, I mean, I've worked in retail. I worked. I think. I think um, most people do that. You know, I worked in a before I moved to London. I was working at um, uh, Bernardo's charity shop in Manchester. I was like an assistant manager. For then, I worked at Mothercare and Tesco. Um, so like my, for, for the majority of like my professional, like, like serious career professional life, it has been, it has been video editing, um, which I'm incredibly grateful for. I'm very happy that, uh, um, I've got, got to this point. I'm very lucky to have been given the opportunities I have. I think like it's, 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 it's definitely something I've worked for, but it's not, it's, it's also like there's, there's always like a look element to, to getting yeah. your foot in the door and especially in like TV and making stuff online and stuff it's such a competitive and sought after industry um so i'm i'm happy that i, I got here really yeah. for sure do you think there was anything in particular then that got you noticed would you put any sort of w- w- is there a particular video or something that you made that was like that's actually done me a lot of favors I think I think my biggest foot in the door. So I just before I got like before I got a job, like in like 2017, I went on this thing called the Network, which was a talent scheme ran by Edinburgh TV Festival, which is to help people people at entry level try and work in TV. And getting on that scheme was probably the thing that has helped me get you know have some clout and have. Yeah. A bit, you know, get a bit more noticed by employers but I got on that scheme because of my uh, YouTube channel which is me reviewing TV shows so there's both an aspect of me showing off my uh, ability to make and produce stuff by myself and also uh, showing an affinity for TV and I think that that combination helped me get onto that which has then snowballed into more opportunities like I, I even, I think one one of, the, one of my favorite videos that I've made is one where I'm recalling my my time at that on that that talent scheme and mm-hmm. my time doing that um, going through that whole process and that's that's quite like a story like 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 a like, you know 
it's like a 10 15 minute video of me talking about my experience and how how it's helped me and stuff and i think that's that showing that to him, to people as well as as many people think oh he's, he 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 has a passion for this and i think being yeah. able to show that passion and show that you're proper keen and you're, you're spending your spare time on this kind of thing is 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 what people really and, and showing personality as well i think that that's also a really important thing mm-hmm. to people especially if you're going to be working with them uh, if they want to work with you, you you want to work with people that they're going to get on with you know mm-hmm. so what are the kind of best and worst parts of the job um i guess uh i mean best part is the the creative side like anything any any editing where i get to actually have have quite a lot of creative input i guess with the worst part of the job is a lot a lot of it is like reversioning already made tv shows for facebook and subtitling them and yeah. basically just like taking a scene from like I don't know, big bang theory or something and putting it on their e4 facebook page that's like you know that's that's part of i guess the treadmill of social media is is trying to get out you know content and yeah getting getting that stuff going there's 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 a side to digital that i guess isn't in like the more professional tv world and that is just the the churn and the the quantity needed to keep that you know keep those things running feed the the Um, machine yeah feed the machine feed (laughs) feed the algorithms you know I i know youtube is especially notorious for this but i think it's across the board across all social media it it is a beast that will always have it will always want more it'll yeah. always want more so i think a lot of that is keeping that running and take it you know to, you know because because it's all in all of the digital stuff is becoming house like for the most part it's it's because it was before it was run by other companies that we paid yeah, yeah. That channel four paid and now it's all being done in leads and yeah. all being done here by us but we there was like a transitioning period where all this new responsibility was coming onto the team and that team had to grow and adapt and get all that done without uh, too much uh, hiccup but like when when we actually get to do make some something original and something that's we we produced completely that's 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 the best stuff because that's yeah. ours you know and i think it's not happened as much yet but i think there's going to be a lot more stuff we will be working on obviously i can't say anything but <laughs> I, th- I think it's going to be exciting seeing what we what we what we get to do with things yeah. but i think any anything i think i think ask any any creative what they like most about making things and it's well yeah making something that's that's you can put your own personality into and your own editorial yeah. stamp on have you got to play with a bigger train set at channel four <laughs> have you got new toys to play with there um it's 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 annoying because i think i think we will but i think because a lot of it is because we've not been able to like i guess we haven't been able to shoot or or anything ourselves Mm because we have all that facility we have it all bought and stuff but we haven't been allowed to like let loose with anything because because of because of covid because of the year we've had we've not been able to like it's all it's all been the you know the the our, you know regular content and using shows and and some outsourced outsourced stuff, but it's I think I have learned a lot about editing whilst being here and uh, being able to expand my my you know knowledge whilst being here as well as um, you know getting to work on some cool sh- you know stuff behind the scenes yeah. which is nice. So I think it's definitely been an interesting job like there's a lot of variety to it for sure Mm. so uh, i want to cover some other aspects of work and then if we go into uh, and then if i think of any other questions i'll kind of drop them as we go along we've kind of covered covid and the the working from home aspect sort of this year and a little bit of like how things might be different in the future is brexit going to affect you as far as you know as far as I know, I, I mean, as far as I know, not, not, not really. I don't think. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's not like we're we're, we're importing videos 
is is going to go by a by a ship, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that's going to be something that probably would import, you know, you know, impact people's lives normally. I, mean, I guess maybe like ordering equipment and stuff, but most of the stuff is is completely online that we do. So I I, I imagine it won't really affect my job all that much, other than impacting productions that is for for like anything big that Channel 4 is working on, any any normal shows that they work on. Because a lot of what we do is adapting stuff that's made for Channel 4 TV to online. So if there's less of that stuff coming through, we've seen it with COVID, is less, less, less of that stuff coming through, then there's less of us to, less, there's less stuff to check online. So I guess we'd rely more on stuff we already own. So I think that's, but that's like me trying to think all the way down the, the production line of stuff like yeah. how it could affect it. I don't think it would affect my day to day all that much other than yeah. there being less beans in the supermarket. I don't know. Uh, I might might have less beans to buy from this. Why am I going for beans? I don't want to talk about beans. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's a weird it's a, bean it's tangent. A, yeah, it's a good it's a good tabloid, you know, signifier, isn't it? It's like yeah, everyone everyone knows what beans are, and all kids love beans. I never True. Liked beans. Oh, <laughs> scandalous! How <laughs> could you? You'll be fine beans. then. Jack, come January. <laughs> <laughs> Bean sausage, it's got it. It's fine. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> don't need my beans. No. Uh, what was the other thing that I was going to ask? Um, oh yeah. Well, I I suppose on the Brexit front, I, the changes will will probably be literally cosmetic for you. I would I would guess it will. You know, it'll be like small changes in the way that programs are pitched. Mm. So, you know, because the the media aesthetic will will surely change after you know, like after Brexit's finalised and so on. I mean, I don't. So it's it sort of you didn't really notice the kind of continental European aspects of the EU. Like I personally, I wasn't really aware of that kind of thing until like the nineties, mid to late nineties. Mm. A lot more cafes and sort of, you know, cafes to drink outside and this kind of thing. And yeah. More fancy bars and so on. Um, so, but they, you know, it does, it does affect the culture. You know, we will have less, less of that cultural transmission with Europe or a change, yeah. well, a change in it anyway. So over time, I guess there will be a change in how we're pitching things and how we're seeing ourselves as well. Also, depending on what happens with the rest of the country, you know, with the fallout from it. So, yeah. Um, I, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a really, I think it's, it's one of those things that's like, it's, it's hard to predict the cultural, um, you know, changes this will make. I, I have not a bloody clue. I think I, I've, I thought from, um, I mean, I, I, I was, I've always been, I've always been for Remain and I still think that to this day. But I think it's one of those things that even at the time I was like, there was there was people were making good arguments for both sides, and you know I don't think I felt clever enough to make the right decision at the time. In retrospect, I definitely think I, I, I know what I should vote for anyway. I'm I'm a little I'm a little um, worried, I guess, for a lot of people who do work in industries that are going to be severely affected by it um i'm again i'm very lucky i'm going to keep saying this over and over because i <laughs> i i think in, i'm still in that stage where i still don't believe i work for channel four i'm still yeah. like oh my god what how <laughs> what um but i i am um, yeah I, I don't i don't know what to think i think it's all so up in the air and so shrouded in uncertainty that it, it's 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 a little bit of fear of the unknown, but the fact we don't know anything, and it's two weeks to to New Year's, you know, it's, uh. it's, it's it, well, it's also kind of standard now, isn't it? Of like, oh, well, there's this thing. It could be really, really awful and terrible. Are we going to do anything about it? We'll talk about it <laughs> in, in like you know certain defined terms, but we might not do anything about it. And if we do stuff about it, we might not be doing the right things about it. I mean, like with COVID, it's like, you know, we don't know. We still don't know where we're going to be a year from now. 
yeah uh, you know we could be in exactly the same place with them you know the new cycle will move on but it could still be just like you know we're trying to roll out the vaccine and we're trying to get it to everyone and we just have to lock down in these places and they've developed a new tier system because yeah the old one was like it, it run out of its political usefulness so it's like uh yeah, will... here, here's another thing that we don't know about let's maybe not think about it too much and just carry on you know what i think honestly i think that's the only way we stay sane i, I was i was legitimately though there's been so much terrible news this year there's been so much like just you know even not even just this year at some level it's been happening since really? 2016 <laughs> yeah since brexit and trump the the news cycle has been a slog of just uh, just shit I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast or not, but it's just been... Okay, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but it's been... It's just been just such, such a... such a, it's, it's just been constant. It's, and, it's, and it's not just, like, the normal 24 hours news cycle. It's, it's a 24-hour news cycle on, on digital and on online. And I think... And as someone who, who I guess, works in it, 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 it worries me to no end how far misinformation gets and how people are considering not taking the vaccine when it when it is is rolled out to everyone who you know when it's available to people it's it's you see it in facebook comment chains and when i'm w- wondering whether that's a real person or whether that's a some sort of russian troll or whatever but i'm more convinced now that there's there's more real people commenting this stuff than not because i uh, you know you hear it in real life occasionally it's it's terrifying and i think this this it, 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 even though it is my work and it is something i do i would genuinely i think i would be really thinking about getting rid of my own facebook if i didn't need it for work yeah. um because i think it's 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 a it's quite it's a it's, it's not a good thing and i think on the whole it's not i mean it, in some ways it is because then you hear about uh, people using Facebook to, you know, speak up against their their governments in their own countries and stuff across the world. So there's this good and bad across the internet, but it has this. We have a r- real severe problem with misinformation, and I don't know what else to do other than try and be the part of it that's not um, spewing um, headlines without any any facts behind them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So- not being responsible enough to actually verify things before you're throwing them out there just for for clicks. Exactly, and I think I think we're all susceptible to it. I think even I I I've, I've caught myself looking at headline and that's that's engineered towards my I guess political viewpoint and co- cognitive dissonance and stuff. And then I look into it like, exactly, and and it's not and it's. It is on. It affects everyone. If you think you're immune to it, you're not. The best thing you can do is be aware of it and try and catch yourself, you know, and read through to the articles, assess the facts. But I don't think everyone is equipped well enough to recognise when they're being fed a lie, or fed, mm. you know, fed a dupe. Because I've read, it's... I've read a few things this year about burnout. You know, like people were talking about sort of Zoom zoom burnout and like various yeah. other different forms of burnout and you know people have reacted i mean you were saying earlier like in terms of you being very lucky and stuff and you know people have had worth years it's like yes but i mean there's a commonality in the fact that you know like two billion people in the world were locked down at the same time and mm. it, this this is a weird universal experience i mean it's not totally universal but this is a bit you know this is this is like a bigger than live aid sort of thing yeah, you know oh, I mean? yeah. like something that everyone around the world in, in various places have experienced on a mass scale and it is a weird sociological experiment of let's you know let's lock everyone up in a weird form of solitary confinement for several months and see what that does to the the world but yeah i think it's very easy to kind of you know n- not to undersell that experience like i think it's going to change us in ways that we're not even like i think we already have gone mad from this in ways <laughs> that we don't know about yet Do you know what i yeah. mean and it's one of those things of like it, you know it's like some things you can't see and there, there are things that you can't unexperience 
and it's weird this because like for me personally I'm a bit similar to you in that I'm kind of you know I'm I'm sort of I can work from home and I'm kind of confined to quarters and it wasn't like a major change for me going into lockdown but it's still been weird like you know how it's changed your social dynamics of who you can see when you can see people where you can see people how much you see people I don't know about you but the first lockdown there was a lot more I was a lot more on on online like doing video chats and so on this Mm. most recent not bothering um you know you the first lockdown was nice and sunny. Now it's yeah. all dark and kind of miserable, and it's just, it seems a lot more grim the second lockdown. Yeah. Um, being similar for you? I, th- I, think, I think you're right. I think because I think the first lockdown, a lot of my spare time that would be spent doing other things was spent walking and going outside and going for longer walks and, and getting some air as a way of killing time. And I love, I love going for walks and hikes and stuff it's great it's good for you it it, it but it's cold now and yeah. and i don't uh, uh, sometimes t- there'll be i think i have actually spent like there has been like a string of days where i've just not gone outside and it's terrible mm. for me and but i don't have to um <laughs> but it's bad it, it, I, I don't i think this is definitely going to i think there's going to be people who uh, uh probably might be more susceptible to becoming hermits and not wanting to leave the house and maybe trying to avoid leaving the house all altogether um the, you know this 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 kind of thing can develop you know people can can you know genuinely be you know, they, they, they might fall into 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 the worst patterns and it might you know make anyone with like pre-existing conditions and stuff to to fall into worse you know you know worse places worse place mentally really mm. um so I, I think i worry for people on that aspect and, uh, and like you said i don't think we might we would see the effects of that until uh later on i think well, in many cases you won't see effects at all i mean like some people yeah. who you know the people who are isolated if they're not in an area where there are these volunteers and mutual aid people that have gone out and sort of made an effort to get hold of people there are you know, there are people we may not even discover for ages <laughs> just hiding yeah, away. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's, it, it's strange. Sorry, I interrupted you then. Can you remember your point? Um, nope, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the reason I brought it up was it, it's kind of that similar thing of I know, I know people who are probably working more because they're working from home. And mm. also because they're they're sort of working constantly and they're they're really not going out, you know that not just sort of oh your social skills have got a bit bad, you know like your, your writing gets a bit bad over the summer holidays at school. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, on the verge of like seriously impacting their ability, you know, because I've seen people get nervous of people or yeah. being around people, and it's not just like children; it's it, it's adults as well. So yeah, it's, it's going to have a lot of effects on a lot of people, but I think it's also going to have, well, it has had, and it is still having, and will continue to have effects on all of us, but in ways that we don't necessarily categorize as, you know, we're kind of, we're trained to think, oh, that's all, you know, like it, it, we're trained mm. to step over it. Does that make yeah. sense? Of like, okay, it's an interfe- it's a blockage in the road. It's a detour. I go around and I continue on this is just something like a disruption that we kind of detour around yeah uh, and I don't think that's that's how we're encouraged to experience it but I'm not sure that is how everyone has experienced it like we all want to kind of move on to something different but I think that there's more going on there I think that yeah it's I think it's still going to work itself out in some weird ways like I don't know about you personally, but for me, I couldn't I couldn't do another full year of this. And no. like, you know, even the intermittent lockdown. Like I, I I won't feel very happy if this is still the situation this time next year. Oh god no. No, I I just miss people. <laughs> I just miss my mates. I just miss socializing. we I mean we are we are social creatures at the end of the day, and I think this is probably like the most unnatural thing 
we can we can do really um, as a, as a species is just you know all individually sit in a room you know and not speak to anyone. I mean it's not exactly like that because we have we have this we have talking online and stuff. So I don't think I don't think it's as bad as it because I, I I was thinking the other day what if this happened in like two thousand and three. Or like, or a, a time, or a time like in modern society, just before we had all the video calls and the. the... Well, two thousand and three was the foot and mouth, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which but it was wasn't... mad in and of itself. But obviously, we weren't we weren't locked down for that. But you, you know, it was kind of wash your feet at airports and. Yeah, it just. But this is this is a whole new beast, isn't it? This is. This oh yeah, is... yeah, a whole other level. I, yeah. I mean, when I heard about SARS one and stuff, you know, you'd get. I, I remember talking to people. There was loads of stuff about pandemics uh, mm. at the turn of the century and people at the beginning of this century. And I remember talking to people and they're like, oh, this bird flu, bird flu is going to be like a massive thing. Yeah. Uh, bird flu ever. And then they were going on about SARS. And then I was in London during the swine flu one. Yeah. And they'd put up signs in, in my workplace saying like you know wash your hands everywhere and this that and the other and I'm like is if swine flu is going to come over here like it's not going to happen mm. largely didn't um so when this one as well I was like that's not going to happen yeah <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you don't believe any of it for sure it's it's such like a it's a it's such a movie concept yeah you know? <laughs> such a fi- sci-fi idea to happen yeah um it's weird. It's still weird. I still get a bit weirded out when I, you know, you go to Little and everyone's wearing masks. I'm like, this is this is definitely a scene from a film. Yeah, I mean, like I remember sitting, I I uh, gone to the supermarket. I hadn't gone into the supermarket. I was sat in the car park outside, mm-hmm. and I'm just watching everyone come out with masks, and it's like. So this is the 21st century then, is it? This is, you know, like no hoverboards, no no silver jumpsuits. People, everything's exactly the same. It's great, it's boring, it's, everything's wet, but everyone's wearing masks. Yeah. That's good. We got well, some nice phones. <laughs> yeah, we've got better phones and we're all wearing masks. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah, slightly dystopian. Yeah, um, love it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to move back off of uh, coronavirus and all the general crises. I'm, go back I'm, to, I'm, I'm uh, happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> go, go back to the video editing. So I want to talk to you a bit about uh, software programs. So in I shot uh, a film on digital video in 2000. Well, films are generous to um like low budget did it all myself sort of thing and i was editing on um yeah but i bought the machine in 1999 yeah 50 gigabyte hard drive oh, oh watch Massive. out <laughs> I, paid, I paid like five grand for this machine at the time bearing in mind so yeah. it's a custom built like machine with adobe premiere on and it was operating on windows 95 um and it was it crashed all the time and it was a nightmare and um yeah it was really really stressful to edit on uh so i would imagine you avoided all of that kind of nightmare and you kind of came in when like even windows movie maker was pretty decent like i mean it does the job of being able to allow you to cut so yeah yeah i think i, I came in um because I in 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 a weird way like uh, I think around like teenage years was when like my teenage years was when, like YouTube was really starting to come up um, and like the internet was really starting to become a thing um, and I think that's that's where like a lot of my you know my love for for making for stuff online and making things and editing and stuff started to come about mm-hmm. so I think. I'm, I'm quite I think that's that's the lucky thing about today and trying to you know wanting to be like some sort of film you know be a filmmaker or, or be a you know some you know be you know anything in, in in film production it's never been more accessible I got here I don't have a degree I don't have any sort of media degree and I work and I, and I, and I work where I do because I learned it on YouTube you know 
it's it's so accessible if you want to learn it if you want to learn you learn how to video edit learn how to make films learn how to make a gaming twitch channel or whatever you can do that completely you know off your own back as long as you've got a, a computer and um you know, access to the internet you know i had it on premiere pro and most of like all the adobe suite and all that kind of thing um but there are there are ways to 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 learn that and 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 obtain that and if people can learn it like off their own back you know today's day i think that's kind of incredible so um i'm I'm assuming when you first started cutting things together you were shooting your own stuff Mm. or for things to edit so did you start what just shooting on a phone or you started with a video camera or an old camcorder or in, interestingly enough actually i started i more started like trying to make animation like so okay. I, I so i wasn't really shooting as much um like i first wanted to be an animator like a 2d animator um then i realized i can't draw uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then i just started moving more into the like um just you know the video editing side of it because even though i i i, I can't draw i learn all the animation principles and you know being able to make make stuff move on screen that you know make things bounce in and bounce out learning animation and learning the basics of animation is a really good way to to train yourself on on how to do the other stuff and even if it's not strictly like making the the next adventure time or whatever you know it's 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 but it's it's i I kind of come a really weird route where i'm not I haven't I, I haven't traditionally shot that much stuff. Um, mm. I've just made it purely with graphics I've made by myself or mm. took you know s- stuff from you know like like made screenshots and video and stuff move in it you know and made a little character version of myself move um, yeah. without need really needing a camera. I started to shoot more like run, but I started with drawing. Mm bad bad versions of myself (laughs) (laughs) uh so what what did you start out animating with um i started on animating with what used to be um macromedia flash um which is then which was then adobe flash which is now adobe animate cc um again that's coming from me watching a lot of newgrounds.com a lot of a lot of animation on there it's a good resource for anyone who wants to learn animation because it's a lot of grassroots independent animators and artists you know you know rating each other's stuff commenting giving feedback um i think i started dabbling then but it was all it started off as a hobby and it was a hobby for a long time before i i got to the point where i wanted to be a professional but by that point i had made a lot of videos for youtube my own YouTube, I, I built up a, a, a small audience mm-hmm. through that. Um, so it, it, it kind of, I had a very weird route mm. to, to learning all those skills, but it, it you know, I, 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 it, it got me, it, it did it, it did the job, you know? Mm. So what was the animation that was like, that sold you on, I want to do that? Like, how did you get into the animation? Was it? You know what? 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 Who? Who? Or what was the particular animation or animator that most? There was. Oh, there, I mean, there was plenty back in the day. There was all like the. There was always like stickmen fighting. You know, there's like stickmen fighting animations. And it's just like mm-hmm. lots of Matrix parodies of stick figures. Really, so well it was, it, it was mainly figures. all through. So it wasn't TV. It was mainly like stuff that you were watching on that on that uh, website. Yeah. You got, you, so you found that site and you were just like, all of this stuff is really good. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm a weird one. A lot of people get inspired by films they watch or like uh, TV shows they love. I, I got inspired by some teenagers making stuff on the internet. I, I, it, was, it was wanting to make stuff online that, that inspired me first and foremost, which I think now I think about it, that's weird. Mm. I'm a weirdo. Nice. But were you 
did you access in that then? Were you, was that sort of on a phone, on a tablet, on a laptop in your room or like where, you know, is this sort of something that you, you, you just sit in your bedroom and you'd be on your laptop and you'd be watching these things endlessly or you were always on your phone watching it? Like how, how did you consume these things? Um, I guess mostly like it's because we we had we had a, we have a had a family computer and and you know my dad was like all right you can go on for a bit and I spent a long time on 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 the internet or trying to draw things yeah. and then I I kind of left it for a bit and then I actually revisited all this as an adult and I was mm-hmm. like oh, I could try and do this again as a bit of fun on the side whilst I was at uni and I started doing it more and more. And then I started trying to make a YouTube channel and then the YouTube channel channel got going. And yeah, it's it's just it's 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 interesting that I revisited revisited it as an adult though. I think uh, when I was at uni. I think because I because there was there was obviously a long period where I wasn't really doing any of that and again didn't know what I wanted to be. It wasn't like a, a huge passion for filmmaking through like a lot of like you know, between like 16 to 20 something I, I i picked it up as an adult uh, halfway through uni doing social work and that was then my escape from what i was doing at the time and then i learned to uh, love that and then i now i'm doing it weird <laughs> do you like working with a team of editors you again you're going to be learning different things and different ways of doing it that people have yeah so that's going to be an interesting environment in that most people would imagine an editor working with maybe one, two other people at a time on a project, like a director, producer, maybe another editor. Yeah. So that's, you know, like having a team of people who might be working on their own, being able to exchange ideas and stuff, that sounds like quite a nice environment to be in and quite unique in some ways, quite, yeah, quite yeah. A special environment in some ways. So obviously, that's difficult at the moment because everybody is <laughs> working remotely. <laughs> yes. Um, but do you like, are you using sort of, you know, Slack or whatever or Teams to like, are you all communicating with, with one another even though you're working in isolation from each other? 100%. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very collaborative effort. Um, we're all on Teams and stuff, and I'm always like on to people about this or that and how to do this edit or what. You know, is this meme okay and stuff like that? Um, it's 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 always the best. I think I I think that's probably the main difference between like I don't know, get someone learning it by themselves and YouTube and trying to make YouTube by yourself and actually working on something with other people. It, it you you learn so much quicker around other people. I think I think I I, I taught myself a lot, but I my you know my learning quadrupled in how much I learned in how much of a t- short space of time when I started working with other people and other editors because mm. they'll be like why don't you do it like this you, you're doing this the long way around and I, I was like oh yeah of course I'm an idiot this this works so much better and now my all my edits are faster and all this is faster mm. and, and all the shortcuts and all, all the things that you know if, if someone who's, who's just learning it online might not know to do because they'll have learned it a certain way and maybe learned bad habits, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, as far as working with people online, um, I guess you just, it's just being able to keep checking in with people and not leaving anyone by them. You know, you know, if if you're working on a project with someone else, you need to keep communicating every time. You know, oh, I've, I've finished this edit. Can you have a look? And yeah, uh, constantly checking in and checking each other's work and going on a call and to discuss it or discuss ideas um even though i'm strictly a video editor i'm always we're always we always i always come and help come up with the ideas together with an editor i think it's the same across the board Mm -hmm. because one that's fun two you 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 know editors have a good eye you know have their own good eye and, and able to come up with good ideas and stuff um and it's 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 one one of the most fun parts of the job is coming up for you know all this all coming up with things with other people and bouncing ideas off each other it's it's where it's, it's where the best work gets done i think yeah. yeah sure cool so any sort of tips in terms of what programs you would use like the other thing i want to ask as well is mm. i suppose because yours is the kind of role where 
like as if you were a musician or a computer technician or something like that like i can mm. see in the background of our video you know you've got a keyboard there you've got your mic set up and stuff how much equipment do you need to buy for for work i mean like obviously you'll need editing software you could get like davinci resolve for free but if you're doing it at yeah. a professional level you want to be paying for it so i like, how much equipment would you need to get like would you say that you can you know like we were saying earlier it's so accessible now that you yeah. can kind of basically start with the cheap free stuff and just kind of work up from there or do you need to be spending money to get the actual higher end good good equipment I think um, I think if you just if you're just starting out and you're just learning the ropes, try try not to spend too much money because you might not even like it because editing can take a lot of patience. But like there are ways to get any and all the programs you can uh, <laughs> that I might not mention here. Uh, but I think uh, everyone needs to learn. You know, you need to learn first before you can start being paid to do it. It's it's only when I started you know really it, it, it either like it first became a passion for me and that's when I started spending money on myself and buying a mic and that kind of thing mm -hmm. that was me spending money on a hobby you yeah. know spending money on my YouTube channel for fun and for passion you know and then after that it started snowballing into actual professional work and at that point, if you're being paid to do it, you should probably pay for if you pay for stuff like you know Adobe Creative Cloud or. But there's lots of there's a lot of resource for you don't you don't need a, the Adobe suite. There's lots of ways to alternatives to Premiere. Like you mentioned, a DaVinci Resolve. The paid version of that is is a contender for both Premiere and After Effects in some ways. Blender is a is a a competitor to After Effects and, and has a lot of 3D, is brilliant for 3D. Learning that stuff is something you can work on. There are, there's GIMP and the, there's like an online version. It's like a, it's an alternate online version of Photoshop if you wanted to use Photoshop. Um, I can't remember what its name is now, but Google free alternatives to Photoshop and you'll find them. And, and look up all the tutorials in the world on YouTube and make stuff for yourself, make stuff because it's fun. And at some point it might snowball into a career, but uh, you need to work out if it's if it's your passion first. Mm -hmm. I think that's most important. And then just you make daft stuff online, make memes, make, um, you know, go on like a subreddit, like high quality GIFs and try and learn how to make a high quality GIF. And then you'll, that way you learn how to make animated kinetic typography with after effects the, the best way to learn i think is picking a project that you are gonna really want to make and really enjoy making and just make it for me it was a youtube channel talking about tv reviews and, and the funniest way i thought i could for others it might be making a short film or doing or making animation you 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 pick a project first then work out how to do it after and you you learn in between you learn in the process i think that's the most fun way and the most effective way of doing that and if you can then try and work with other people on, on a project and even better because then you'll learn off each other you, your answer kind of surprised me in terms of uh, like finding that website and you know coming into editing through that mm. i would have guessed based on your um your youtube channel sorry i'm just plugging in a power pack um <laughs> Get, that you that it would be something like you know avatar the last airbender and then oh. you were kind of yeah i really like animation and then got into the the editing that way yeah so i think it's i think it's interesting that you but, but then that makes me think why did you do, why was your youtube channel about tv shows did you look and sort of say everyone's doing films there's not many people doing tv or a little maybe bit yeah that? That, that was one aspect of it. And also, I do like, I mean, I, I'm not saying when I said before that, you know, I wasn't inspired by TV or film, I was inspired by digital daft animations. Mm. I still love TV and I love film and I watch a lot of it. So it has, that has probably definitely inspired me in a lot of ways. But I think there was a lot of stuff. I consume a lot of like stuff on YouTube 
and consume a lot of stuff online. And I think I wanted to do my own version of that and have fun with it. And I think the DIY style of YouTube and 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 how people do it is it, it makes that stuff accessible. And that's why all all kids nowadays want to be YouTubers because on some level it's obtainable. You know, anyone can grab a camera and vlog. Anyone can make something nowadays. The the difference between success and uh, failure online is, you know, can you have a, a unique take on it? Do you know how to work the algorithm? I guess there's, there's mm-hmm. all, but it's it's all stuff you can learn, and mm-hmm. it's all stuff that you can get better at. Um, and I think that is the appeal is the accessibility of it. And I yeah. think that was the appeal to me because um, no, I don't think anyone wakes up one day and thinks I'm going to be the next Edgar Wright or I'm going to be the next Peter Jackson because that stuff is, you know. It, it, the, the route there is so much more complicated than just picking up a phone and, and talking to it. Well, the route to working hours is not complicated at all, and all you have to do to be on the show is pick up your phone and talk to it. I currently have two more lockdown interviews to publish after this episode, and then that's it for the moment. As I have said before, if I get some more interviews, I'll try to keep putting them out regularly as episodes. But if guests aren't coming in regularly, then I will have to wait until I have a few weeks worth of episodes before I can release them. Next time on Working Hours, we're talking numbers as I'm speaking with an accountant. We cover a lot of ground in that interview, so please do come back for it. Also, there are still 10 episodes from last year's volume for you to explore, and the other great episodes from this year are also available for free wherever you get your podcasts. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. If you're feeling it, why not become one of my first three patrons and thus become one of my favourite people ever? Be my guest on Working Hours. If you're in Leeds or from Leeds, then get in touch now. Email this podcast, workinghourspod at western-studios.com with just a short bio and suggestions of your availability if you want to be the guest, or you can just send feedback, questions, comments, queries, whatever. Time for the rules. This is a rules-run local podcast for local people. The first rule of working hours is you must tell a lawyer about working hours. The second rule of working hours is you must like and subscribe to the show. The third rule of working hours is that if you're a lawyer, then be my guest. The fourth rule of working hours is take ownership of your work. Agitate, educate, organise, and maybe get to democratising your workplace. What do you do, Leeds? Tell me about it. Go to western-studios.com for more information or just email workinghourspod at western-studios.com with a brief bio and some suggestions regarding your availability. Please let me know if you would wish to be anonymous on the show. If you would like to take part but you don't want to be identified, then you can send me a secure email to westernstudios at protonmail.com. Don't want your interview published right away? Fine, we can do that. You will have approval on what gets published from your interview. You can follow this show on Twitter at Western Studios 2 and on Instagram at Western underscore Studios underscore Leeds. You can support the show with a one-off donation either to Kofi, that's K-O hyphen F-I dot com forward slash working hours or via buymeacoffee.com forward slash Western Studios where you can give as much or as little as you like. If you'd really like to help out, then you can give the show regular support and help build the project and help us in meeting the goal of lasting out this decade. Subscriptions for Loiners are a pound a month. Go to www.patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash working hours pod to become a regular supporter. If you're not from Leeds and you would still like to support this show, you can join the Outlander level for five pounds a month. That's it. Now go do one amazing thing today.
podcast is made by Western Studios Leeds Limited. It is presented and produced by Simon Treen. This interview was recorded over Skype. Thank you to Captivate.fm for podcast hosting. The Working Hours theme was provided by Australian-based loiner DJ Punk. You can hear more from Punk at soundcloud.com forward slash big time punk. If you're in Leeds and have a podcast idea that you would like to develop, please email makemypodcast at western-studios.com with some details about what you would like to achieve and let's start making your podcast a reality today. Follow Western Studios on Twitter, Instagram and linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash western hyphen studios for sporadic news on new episodes of Working Hours and for new original podcast productions that will be coming soon from Western Studios Leeds.